Hi and welcome in this new video. In this demo I will show you what happens under the hood when Apache Spark uses buckets in the join. In my example, as you can see, I, create, I created already two tables called orders and orders2 and both have the, the same uh, rows, namely the order ID composed of order ID and user ID. Both are bucketed by the same number of buckets and by the same column. And in the query, as you can see, I'm doing a sample join on the bucketed column. And globally, when it happens, so when you use the bucket columns of both data sets to make the join, uh, the join will be performed locally, so without the, the shuffle. And now I will show you why does it happen. So let me start this code with debug mode. And let's see what happens. First, you can see that we retrieved some metadata from the catalog. And in this catalog, you can see that we have a property called bucket spec. And this bucket spec, as the name indicates, will store the bucket specification. So the columns and the number of buckets. This property is later passed to pass down in the execution plan. And it's involved here where Apache Spark defines the partitioning for this specific node of the physical plan. So as you can see, whenever, if the bucket scan is enabled, so globally it means that it's enabled in the configuration and that the bucket's configuration is correct. So if it's true, Spark will go here and define the partitioning with the hash based partitioning using the number of buckets and the columns involved in the bucket specification. And globally, this hash thanks to this, this hash partitioning, Spark will be able to load directly the the data which is which is bucketed by the same attributes to the same input partition. And let me continue this debug mode just to show you that first the output partitioning condition is met, is satisfied, so there is no need to add any extra shuffle on our broadcast mode. And just to confirm, we can see that hash partitioning is used. It happens obviously for both sides of the joins. And now when we build the RDD responsible for the physical execution, we will pass inside this create bucket read RDD method. And what is inside? Inside you will find that we start by grouping, grouping the, the files per bucket. And you can see that here we have two different buckets, bucket number one with three files and bucket number zero with only one file. Later we apply some optimization like the bucket spraining and at the end we build the file partition specification for every bucket. So for every, and here every bucket represents a single input partition in Apache Spark and that will be later passed to file scan RDD and executed partition by partition in the in the, its compute method. So it happens now for the second data set. And you can see now that we are physically computing the the join with at part at Spark input partition basis. So we can see that in the splits we retrieve the index one for the orders and that in the near future we retrieve the indexed one still for the same order of course and now for the orders two for the same input partition index and the same will happen for the bucket zero so for the partition zero 
and globally thanks to this optimization Apache Spark will be able to perform the join operation locally so without redis redistributing the data that's something that could happen or would happen if the broadcast join is not used in case of not bucket join and if you want to discover more about this topic you can check the article which is linked in the description of this video it was Bartosz Konieczny from waitingforcode.com thanks for watching